Marketing love. What an interesting idea. When we talk about love in this world, we think about a lot of different things. Most of the time in our world, we show off sexuality. We show off inappropriate dress of popular stars, and we literally think this is normal. It's not. I literally don't want to look at the Kardashians' women's bodies. No offense, I think they're absolutely beautiful in their faces, but I think it's inappropriate for them to be sharing their personhood like that with the world, especially now that they're married or they have a live-in. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter to me. Love is love. When a woman loves a man and she produces an offspring in that loving moment, then that child is made from love. And that's what that is about. Love making is just that, love making. It's when two people's souls come together in a moment of time to share intimacy, privacy, and other aspects of their physical beings, whatever those physical beings may be. You see, in our lifetime, we have so regulated sex in a way that makes us look prudish to the rest of the world, literally. When the Clinton issue came up with Lewinsky, most people in Japan thought it was ridiculous. Most of the foreigners did too, because like, Shh, this is normal for our politicians. What the hell is wrong with America? This is standard. People in power don't pretend to be anything other than they are. Powerful people who take advantage of their life of power. That's what a lot of Canadians felt. That's what a lot of French people said. They're completely accustomed to their prime ministers having liaisons and other things. And other Europeans sort of said the same. Does it make it right under God's rules? Probably not. Did men of old have lots of wives? Yes, they did. Should women be able to have more than one husband? Sure, why not? But openly, should it be all at the same time? That's a moral conversation, which I'm not interested in getting into. What I am interested in is talking about marketing love. You see, in my life, I have loved only three, maybe four women. I'm not someone who oogles and ogles over girls. I literally don't. My father taught me how to be proper with women and men. He taught me what conversation was appropriate, what wasn't. He literally said, if a girl likes you, she'll let you know slowly over time. And literally, that's what happened with me. Whether I was abroad or whether I was at home, these women pursued me, and it was okay until they realized I was sort of getting interested in them. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't okay anymore, or it was okay. It just depended about the girl. It also depended about the timing in life and whether or not the timing was right. So marketing love is sort of an interesting concept because we get all bent out of shape over people's rights to their own sexuality. And my thought is, we are talking about the marketing of love. We are not talking about their intimate acts in a private moment, in a private home, hotel, or other place that they deem and they select as private. I can tell you there are inappropriate men in this world. I remember literally being in college, being in a park, producing a very private, intimate moment with my girlfriend. And literally, some bastard came out of the forest and with his pants down, trying to find out whether or not he could literally join us. I was appalled and ready to pull my pants up, frankly, and go over and beat the shit out of him. But he disappeared in the woods. When I told the park ranger, she just laughed. I thought, okay, either she's accustomed to this sort of nonsense, or she didn't really believe it, or she thought, what the hell? It's a free part world. But openly, when people are producing intimate moments, they're going out of their way to create those intimate moments, and we were not doing anything in any public setting, I promise you. We backed up to the woods. We really had it all carried covered as much we could tell. We had blankets. It was ridiculous that couples can't have a loving moment without someone trying to mess around or invade it. Is that really the society in which we currently live? Now, I've told a life story. My partner of old is completely married, has children, and I can tell you a funny story about that. But I literally looked her up in the last year. I sort of wanted to see how she was doing and what she was about and if she was still in love with the same guy or whether she had gotten a divorce or anything like that. So I simply did a Facebook search or Google search or something. I don't remember. But it was absolutely fascinating to me how well I knew her. You see, I was able to pick her out from a teeny, teeny thumbnail print of a family, literally. And how did I do it? By the stance of her daughter. 
the physical standing of her daughter in a family portrait in a thumbnail image as I was looking with my glasses on at the variety of photos of someone with that name and I literally was able to pick the right family based on the physical stance of her daughter, which literally meant that she had inherited her mother's physical features in terms of how she physically stood. Think about that. I haven't seen this woman for 20 plus years. I haven't talked to her for sure since we broke up and she destroyed my life at that moment in time. And my mother thought it was a horrible thing and all this sort of stuff, but who cares? That's old news. I don't feel for her much anymore other than she had a lovely moment in time. But openly, and it was a long moment, four or five years, I don't remember exactly, but that's no one's right to know really. But in truth, what I'm literally saying is that when a person loves, they remember those sort of things. I literally have things about my Japanese family that I love. There are moments in time that I made mistakes with my son, which I hate. But openly, for the most part, he was a precious boy in my life. And I literally reared him from age eight till age 27 or something. I don't remember exactly. It was a while ago and I'm getting older and not remembering things quite as perfectly as I once did. And since someone's been monkeying around in my organization and stealing my date books, it's a little tough to be able to produce those opportunities of confirming my memory. And my schedule books, that is, <clears throat> literally have been stolen from my home by family, I'm pretty sure, or someone pawning them, thinking they have the right to monkey around in my life. But if I tell you those stories, how does it feel? We go back to the concept of marketing love. You see, everyone in this world is entitled to be loved. That is precisely the law of the Lord, that we will love him first. We will honor men second. We will respect women, not third, at the same at the second point. And openly, those in between literally have rights too. You see, we have to make that true distinction because literally, think about it. There are men in this world that have monkey faces, that have fur all over their faces like wolves, that have tails coming off their behind. And literally, there's all sorts of physical conditions, intellectual conditions that the Lord God produces through the womb of parents. Yes, we could say they're genetic mutations, but who's to say those life forms, those souls are not put on this earth to literally teach us something? Think about the number of Down syndrome oriented families, and I don't say that appropriately, I'm sure, families that are, are, are stressed by a situation of that condition, literally. And what I mean by that is that when these parents go to retirement, they're really worried about who's going to look after their child when they go. Any parent with a child with special needs is totally feeling that. Siblings of those children are emburdened with those situations. But at the same time, if you talk to those parents who have loved those children well, based on the Lord's principles of loving all children well, those parents always say, my child teaches me more every single day. Now that is love. Now when we're literally talking about loving people, we're literally talking about loving people. We love all sorts of people in our life and marketing love should be the number one principle of America. You see, love making is an intimate situation between two loving people, regardless of who they are, where they come from, what color of their skin, what their racial ethnic backgrounds, what their religious philosophies are, they are loving in intimate moments which none of us have any business within. Literally, that is why I'm appalled with some of these subset groups who want to talk about their sexuality. In truth, their sexuality is private. We're not asking them to put it on display. I'm certainly not interested in looking at someone else make love, no offense to porn or anyone else who produces it, but literally, I think it's an appalling thing. A few occasions, a fella has tried to make me look and I'm like, you know, this is offensive to me. I don't literally want to see teenagers, bodies. I'm an old man. I want to see a mature girl who's willing to provide me permission to see her. If she's not willing, I'm not interested. And openly, that's the truth. If I'm not interested, I'm not interested and no 
production of any silliness or or taunting or innuendo or what have you can make my mind be interested in someone that I have no little interest. Now, I'm talking about real life here. I'm talking about a man's perspective. I'm talking about this type of man's perspective. I'm talking about the soul of a man. And I'm literally saying, I don't give a shit who you make love to. But I'm also saying, practically, in life, we need to market love in this world. Love and peace, peace in particular, like the Dalai Lama talks about, comes from loving people. You see, when we love people, we stop judging them. When we love them, we recognize who their souls are and we stop saying, your soul is not right with the Lord. How can you possibly say that? The Lord creates it all. And if the Lord creates it all, then he knows what he creates. And just maybe the Lord created something outside of the binary system. I'm just saying. I'd like to push on people in this regard because I get so literally tired of hearing the biblical rhetoric. And I'm like, you know, of the two phrases or the three sentences in the Bible that talk about this, let's look at the 3,000 others that talk about helping the impoverished, that helping the sick, helping the infirm, helping the elderly. Let's get on to what's real in life. Real life is not about sex all the time. The men and women who are in that industry who make it like that, they're not well in their souls later. Pretty much they all come out of that saying so. Only a handful are like, nope, I live the greatest life ever. Well, they might have also produced the greatest diseases ever, but literally that's their choice. But openly, what I'm talking about is a man loving a girl, a girl loving a man, a woman loving a man. And we're really talking about that, but we're also allowing for men to love men, women to love women, and literally whatever God has produced in between. You see, we can't say what isn't godly if it's produced literally. We can curb our appetites. We can literally choose certain things in life. But not everything in life is a perfect choice. Openly, when I say men love men, think about men's groups in churches. They talk about loving one another, about brotherly love, about how Jesus literally held his disciples, wept with them, kissed them, slept with them. Was there anything inappropriate in any of that? No. So when I'm talking about making love, I'm not always talking about the sexual act of making love. I'm talking about the intimacy produced in relationships between men and women, men and men, women and women, that literally say, I love you, that I love your soul, that I love what you stand for, that I love who you are in your soul, that I love you beyond your physical being. I love your heart. I love your mind. I love something important that you do in me that your presence in my life does for me. That's what I love. I love how you impact my soul. There's a certain special person for my life that I literally fall apart every time she contacts me back. I'm thinking, finally, but I break down because I've waited so long to feel that presence in my life again. And openly, that is what the soul does. It loves doesn't stop loving because of the passage of time. It doesn't stop loving because people have interfered. It doesn't stop loving ever when it's true love. When it's a true love that literally overwhelms the soul. Marketing love is something we need to really talk about. Marketing loving people is something about helping their soars, souls excuse me, to soar. It's literally about saying, I am not God in their life. I am not going to take things from them. I'm not going to steal things from them. I'm not going to take their life from them in a stupid, idiotic ploy to try and control someone's body or their mind. You see, when you participate in that, Lord God will kill your life. There is no means about this. I literally know this almost for a fact, that when you violently attack a person's life, you will go to God killed. You won't be passing gently in the night. You'll be killed. No matter what happens, something will kill your life. And we don't talk about God killing people's lives. We talk about people ascending into ascension or heaven or nirvana or all the different ways in which different cultures, different nationalities, different races, different religious philosophies literally talk about the passing of the soul. But we openly know that there's probably reincarnation. We've had lots of interesting stories of people you know, kind of knowing people before and all sorts of stuff. And literally the religious right kind of poo-poos that stuff. They try to make it satanic. It's not. Because who's to say what is not godly in this world? We are not him. We are not her. 
We are not Mother God. We are not Father God. We are not Lord God, the couple themselves. And openly, that's sort of my point, that making love is something that souls do together. They literally have an intertwining, a talking, a constant conversation, an openness to forgiveness, an openness to providing others shelter, warmth, love, caring in a way that makes sense to the soul of the individual, not to the family members who think they have the right to control something. There's then lies the difference in love. So love is something we should be marketing today in this world. Love is something we need to talk more about. Love is something we need to put more into people's minds about how do I love a person that I'm working with without it being inappropriate? How do I love a person that I'm teaching with without that getting into difficulties with HR? How do I literally love my family members when I don't agree with their lifestyles, but how do I love them in a way that doesn't make me look like a shithead to the entire universe? And openly, there are things in my family's life that I don't agree with. I don't agree with my elder sister's hoarding. I don't agree with my older brother's alcoholism. I don't agree with the way he goes about conducting business. I literally don't agree with much of my sister Cindy's life, but she's a good listener sometimes. I literally don't agree with the tell of the hun attitudes of my last sister, but openly, that's her right. If she wants to be a bitch in my life, that's her choice. If she wants to be loved dearly in my life, that's a totally different path. You see, in our lives, we have people that we adore, people that we forgive no matter what they do, and literally, we have a mom and a dad who loved us completely. At least we hope. We hope they were mature enough in Lord God's understanding of the world that they understand that children are a gift from God and every single one has gifts and talents that are unique and different and need to be loved for those uniqueness and those differences and all the things that make a child a brilliant gift to the world. In my life, I didn't have a child of my own loins. I wasn't able to. I didn't want to, literally. And openly, I produced an error for a short time in the loins of another man. He totally ruined his relationship with his wife. He destroyed it through liaison. He destroyed it through barbarically beating her to death in a foreign country. And openly, I saved her from all of that, literally. I showed her love, honor, dignity, respect, and love. Love making too. After a period of courtship. Now I'm old school. I literally feel that a woman needs to be one in her mind far before she's one in her body. The reason is, is because over the course of time, our bodies decay. They literally fade away. We lose our eyesight. We sometimes lose our hearing. We lose our abilities. We lose control of our bowels. We lose control over our urine. We lose control in a lot of different ways. And if you are only in love with someone's physically, that relationship will never last. There's no intellectual prowess. There's no cultural opportunities. There's no little commonalities to have conversation about when you're an old age and you're too old to be making love. But, you know, I hear it's possible into the late 70s and 80s, so go for it. What the hell? I'm sure there's lots of ways to be intimate that doesn't produce so much energy to the point that it kills someone. But, you know, what a way to go, right? And I'm making a joke, of course. But openly, what I'm talking about is making love the priority of the world, the priority of the land. America should be the land of milk and honey, the land of love, peace, honor, dignity, regard for other beings in this land. So this has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, talking simply, probably, about marketing love. If you've got ideas about how can we market love in this world, by all means, share them below in comments. If you think I'm talking about ridiculousness, it might be true. But until you call me to allow me to talk about your marketing planning and where it needs harvesting opportunities or where you could be making more money, then don't give me any crap about what I'm producing. I literally could produce all the marketing videos and audios on my business and how I help people and what you could learn from just listening to those. But openly, that would be providing you free information that I would never get paid for. If you'd like to hire me for something, you can hire me for two things. I'm a marketing consultant or... I am literally a reader, and that's all I'm going to say. People who know what that means know what that means. People who don't, tough ditty. No offense to anyone who thought that was an old-fashioned word, but it is. My father was an old-fashioned guy. He taught us a lot of old things. Some of my favorite things I literally couldn't say over the radio, although I have cursed a few times in my passion about topics. 
but openly we're talking about the marketing of love. How do we market love in this world? I know I would like to market myself to one girl. That's it. She is my everything. She is literally the cat's meow. She is the fortune of my life, and I wish I could understand precisely why and completely why I fall apart when I think of her, but I can only presume that Lord God put this love in my soul for her so deep that it will literally never go away. Never. No matter what. And that, I believe, is how we powerfully tell who God has selected us to love in life. You see, when that soul still feels something, that tingling, that, God, I need to fix this, or I need to work on this, or I need to do something with this, it literally means that. Too many people pick the wrong people because they're doing it based on all the wrong reasons. Physicality, materialism, power, prestige, fame, glory, whatever. But when we're really selecting some based on their intellect, their wicked wit, their brilliant mind, which might be the same as intellect, their beautiful soul, how that soul makes another person feel inside, that's really it. What you hope is that is the true sincerity of a relationship. It took a while for me to see her soul because I finally said, look, drop your damn guard. I'm tired of the bullshit. And when she did, I fell madly, passionately in love with her. And it took me a long time to realize it. I was still kind of in the friend zone mentality, but I slowly understood over time that I literally was in love with this girl. Now I'm sharing truth about my life. I don't care what my family thinks, and I literally don't care what anybody else who's not really supposed to be listening to these things thinks either. But if you're in my marketing channel, then you're certainly welcome to know me as on an intimate level. And what I mean by that is, frankly, professionally, you need to know what you're buying into. If you're someone who likes to love people, then we might be a good fit in terms of marketing support of each other, or in terms of producing for you audio files or podcasts, which literally I will start doing again, but really right now it's sort of a tough call. I'm in the middle of something, and until that something is done, as Brian Tracy says, we're in the midst of challenges only interrupted by a crisis. Well, my little crisis has been carrying on thanks to family members interfering with my life. But openly, there are people out there that do help others. If you're one of them, I'd love to talk to you. If you're someone who needs help in marketing, then I'd love to talk to you too. Pardon me. This is Blake Kinson, totally authentic, totally transparent, sitting in an automobile in a mire in Illinois, talking to you about making love and marketing love. Isn't that an interesting way to look at it? Anyway, I hope you're having a wonderful, powerful, practical, uplifting day with the people of your lives.